everyone, it's Christy from Green Eye Tarot, and I'm here today to film a uh, tarot declutter video, which is long overdue because I have a very big stack of tarot and oracle decks that um, will be leaving my collection and hopefully I can be rehoming to somebody else. Um, it's been a while uh, since I did like a really good cull of my collection and I've kind of determined that I'm definitely one of those people that is not a tarot collector. I'm more of a uh, tarot user and I wanna make sure that the decks I have, I'm actually using. I've also come to realize that I don't really use Oracle decks as much as I used to and as much as I thought I would. Um, I have a fairly big collection of Oracle decks and I find that I'm calling those more than the tarot decks. Um, and I find that I'm not really looking to purchase Oracle decks as much as I used to. Uh, I kind of use them for very specific things and I feel like I'm getting very picky for myself with the Oracle decks that I want to bring into my collection and that I want to pair with the tarot decks that I do use. So, um, so yeah, so I realized that I, I really would rather decks go to like some place that they're going to be used rather than just sitting on my shelf. So um, I've determined I'm definitely not a collector. I definitely, you know, feel like weird having them sit on a shelf and not be used. Uh, it's just, that's me personally. I think people who have massive deck collections are amazing. I love hearing about them. I love seeing them. I love watching videos, you know, where people walk through their entire collections. I think it's amazing. Um, but it's definitely just not for me. I don't have the space. I live in New York, which means I have a pretty small apartment and I just don't have the space to be storing decks. Um, and just, I've realized that like, there's so many that I don't connect with and that I didn't connect with from the very beginning, but I had every intention of trying to use them and I just never did. Um, you know, I would pull them out, still not really connect with them and then just put them back on the shelf. Um, and that's just silly. So I feel like it's definitely time, it's long overdue. I have quite a stack of decks to get rid of. So this might be a longer video. So, um, but you know, I feel like it's important to share. I love watching declutter videos. Um, sometimes people declutter decks that I love. Um, and I kind of love to hear why they're decluttering. I love to hear their feelings on it. Um, there's other videos I watch that, uh, are tarot and oracle cull videos that I find decks that I love like someone's actually decluttering it and I'm like all interested in it and you know and and want to look it up and and research it and like see more images of it so I feel like these don't always deter people I feel like sometimes they actually uh persuade you to research and purchase a deck um you know I feel like we all have such different and varying tastes. Some of us, there's decks that like the entire community love. Um, there's some decks that I will just never, you know, feel connected to. You know, I see a lot of people talk about them and I'm always like, nope, that's not for me, <laughs> um, which is fine. I mean, that's, you know, that's as it should be. Like, I feel like we all have our own, you know, tarot practice and, and we connect with certain decks for certain reasons and that's okay. So, um, you know, there's nothing against these decks. I just didn't find myself working with them and I really want to get them to someone who's going to use them. Maybe someone who really wants, you know, these decks. I usually list my decks on like Facebook, um, the tarot marketplace, like those buy, sell and swap groups. Um, if anyone is interested in, in any of these decks, you know, they can comment on the video. Um, I take, uh, PayPal. I usually ship everything media mail. Um, you know, I pretty much ship them out like the same day, if not the next day. Um, I've sold a lot of my decks via the Facebook, like Tarot Marketplace and those buy, sell, um, and trade groups. Um, so I'm pretty familiar with doing it. Like I said, I do everything through PayPal. Um, so shipping usually shows up as long as, you know, you're, you have a PayPal account, you'll get the shipping right away. So if anyone's interested in any of these decks, um, you know, they can reach out and comment or, you know, send me a message. Um, and, uh, and I'll, and I'll gladly, you know, respond. Cause like I said, I would love for people to be actually using these rather than just sitting on my shelf. And some of them have been sitting on my shelf for a long time. So, um, and most of them are in like almost perfect condition. So, so yeah, so I'm going to flip the camera around this way. Uh, I can 
you know, show you the decks that will be leaving my collection. Hi everybody. So I'm back and ready to kind of go through the collection of Tarot and Oracle that I'm going to be decluttering today. Um, they're really in no set order. Um, I'll probably start with the uh, Oracle cards and then go through the Tarot cards. Um, I, like I said, I find myself calling more of the Oracle cards recently, just so that I, I'm really not using them. I'm, I'm definitely kind of evolving with how I use Oracle and it's really not that much. And I'm really very kind of specific about, you know, what I want my Oracle cards to present and, and bring to a tarot reading. And also like, if I'm just pulling like card a day, I just find that my practice is like completely changing. So, uh, so the first Oracle deck that we'll be leaving is the, uh, the goddess temple Oracle cards. Uh, this is a low Scarabeo, uh, deck. I believe I got it. Uh, I believe I got it through Llewellyn. It was Llewellyn or us games, but it is a low Scarabeo deck. I might've got it on Amazon. I, I kind of don't remember. Um, so these are the cards. These are the backs. This is the goddess temple Oracle cards, Sarah Perini and Elena Albanese. The creator and the uh, the artist. Um, so it does come with a book. Um, the book is um, like traditional low scarabeo. It comes in like several languages. So this is the English section right here. So pretty standard, um, you know, uh, Oracle guidebook with. Um, a little bit of a background about the deck. Now this is a, this deck focuses on Avalon and the mythology and um, the the, uh, the mythological figures and the deities that are associated with, uh, with Avalon and um, the places like Glastonbury. So I was really interested in this deck because I've been studying Avalon. Um, I've been uh, working through uh, a book on, you know, on Avalon and studying the Avalonian tradition. So I kind of was really called to this deck because of the fact that it um, relates to Avalon. So it is, um, you know, standard oracle size. It's shiny. You can kind of see I'm getting some glare. Sorry about that. But they are, you know, pretty shiny. Um, so the, the, the artwork is, is very beautiful. I, you know, I have nothing bad to say about the artwork. Um, you know, it, it's beautiful. It's depicting, like I said, different, um, aspects of the Avalonian tradition. Like I said, the myth, the mythological people, the fi figures, creatures, places, um, you know, locations that are related to Avalon. Um, and obviously because it's the goddess temple, there's a lot of um, traditional like images around the divine feminine. So the maiden, mother and crone archetypes. Uh, so yeah, it's like I said, the artwork is, you know, is, is beautiful. Um, I just find that I, you know, after going through it initially and like reading through some of the guidebook, I like never picked it up again. It just wasn't one that I was reaching for. Um, I feel like I have, um, you know, uh, goddess oracle decks that I, that resonate with me more, um, that I definitely like work with on a regular basis. Um, I like this green man card, but I definitely, yeah, I definitely find myself working with different goddess decks and in a different way. I just didn't connect with this. Um, like I said, nothing has nothing to do with the art. The art's beautiful, you can see. Um, it's just not something I ever were was called to work with. I never, you know, I never reached for it. I never really pulled it off the shelf other than going through it the first initial time, reading through the guidebook a little bit. I had I think I used it maybe for a few weeks for like card a day pulls, but for me, like everyday Oracle, like messages for the day, it, this just wasn't working for me so that I definitely couldn't use it in that way because this is very, 
obviously it has a niche and it's, you know, it's very fantastical and, um, you know, mythological. And um, while I love those types of decks and they do have a place in my practice, it's definitely not the card a day type Oracle. Like I wouldn't be using that for this. It didn't really work for that. So um, that's the goddess temple Oracle. So that is definitely leaving um, my collection, hopefully go to someone who will use it and maybe someone interested in Avalon as well. I feel like it would be great if that's the case. Um, that might be a great deck to have. Um, going along with the theme of Avalon, we have the Wisdom of Avalon Oracle Cards by Colette Baron reed um, I feel like people are pretty familiar with this deck. It, it's been around a while. Um, it is a Hay House deck. I think I've had this for a very long time. Um, this is probably one of my oldest maybe oracle decks. I've definitely had it for a long time. So these are the backs. They're beautiful. Um, again, they're, you know, they're pretty shiny. This is like an older deck. Um, it's definitely, you know, been around a while. So the cardstock is, you know, oracle size, but it's, it's shiny. It's definitely glossy, as you can see. Um, again, it's gorgeous. Like the imagery is gorgeous. Um, you know, they are including, um, it's like animals, um, people, like the guides of Avalon, animals, um, messengers. Um, so it kind of like puts them into these categories um, of different energies of Avalon. So here we have the king. He's a messenger of Avalon, the queen. So again, the artwork is, you know, very nice. I love this. Look at that dog. Who doesn't love a golden retriever? So he's an animal guide. So here's my biggest thing with this deck is that there are a lot of these sacred journey markers and they all have the same artwork. So here you have restriction on a little like wooden sign and then you have fear. And that's okay. Like having these, you know, sacred journey markers are fine, but it makes up a big part of the deck. Like if you look and you pull out the actual, like there is a lot of these journey markers and like I said all the same artwork just a sign with a different word on it so that definitely I feel like hindered hindered me using this deck um the like I said the the, the keywords are great um you know like the, the artwork is beautiful um but the fact that there were so many in fact, I think I have some, like it's separated somewhat. Yeah. So here you have love, the mystery, truth, birth, rebirth, communication. Like these are all great keywords and I'm pretty sure they're expansive enough for, you know, people to glean a lot out of this deck. But the fact that it's literally the same artwork, it's the same path, you know, it just really turned me off that there's so many of these that are literally the same. Like, it just feels a little bit lazy in that like you could have, you know, death, like we all know we could do so much with this. We see it in tarot. The tarot decks have, you know, I feel like this, you know, we can do so much with these words, death, focus. Like, I feel like it definitely deserves different artwork. You know, I understand it's a journey marker. It's along a path. I understand the path, but there's just a lot of them in this deck and it sort of really kind of turned me off um, because the way I read cards, I rely on that imagery. You know, I love, it's why I love Right Away Smith. The narrative, you know, um, the very developed and narrated scenes are one of the reasons why I love Right Away Smith, that system. And I love cards that, that have that narrative, you know, that give you a lot of imagery to work with. And to me, this, just because of the amount of cards that all have that same image, it just didn't work for me. So that's the Wisdom of Avalon Oracle cards. Those are leaving my collection as well. And now we have uh, the Earth Wisdom Oracle. Uh, Barbara Moore artwork by Christina Scagliotti. Um, this is a Los Scarabeo. I'm pretty sure this was one of those like big sales that they have. I'm pretty sure that's how I ended up purchasing this. Um, it was definitely one of like the big 50% off sales because I'm pretty sure I got this deck for like less than $10. Um, so again, it's a, it's just like the goddess temple Oracle. It's 
it's Los Garabeo. So again, you have a guidebook that basically, you know, this is the English, this, and the rest is in uh, other languages. Um, so this is like the, basically the guidebook, if you're English speaking, um, is here. Um, so it, it gives you, I mean, it does give you, which I liked, um, like a plant or an herb and a crystal, which is nice. But I have definitely have an herb deck that I use. Um, I, I use the seed and sickle. That's really the one that I reach for now. Um, and then I also have a crystal deck that I work with all the time. Um, so like, I didn't really need an oracle deck that's including all of that when I have. I also have the herbiary, bestiary, and the crystallary decks, which I love. They're one giant mega deck. So because I already have, you know, an oracle that sort of covers all of those things and basically meet, meets that need for me, this is not something that I'm ever reaching with. The backs are kind of awesome. They're beautiful with this this Celtic design and the tree. I mean, they're definitely gorgeous. Um, and like I said, nothing wrong with the artwork. Um, the keywords are, you know, again, expansive enough. I feel like you can definitely get, you know, enough out of it. Um, but it's just not something that I'm ever reaching for because I have other decks meeting, meeting the need. Um, it is, it is, you know, very nice artwork. Um, it's very, very much my aesthetic because I consider myself a Celtic witch. Um, you know, I work with those deities. That's my background, my ancestry. So, you know, this deck definitely speaks to me on that level, uh, but I still don't find myself reaching for it. Um, the artwork, like I said, is beautiful. I, to me, it, it definitely is like a little reminiscent of like those 90s, like digital art tarot decks, which there's nothing wrong with. I don't have a problem with those. It's just not, <coughs> excuse me, it's just not my aesthetic. Like me personally, it, I don't. I'm, I'm not really into like the digital art. Um, I, I definitely am looking, you know, differently at decks now. Like I said, my practice is changing. My, my aesthetic is changing. I do love this, you know, it's very pretty, very, like I said, the artwork is very pretty, very fantastical, very fantasy. Um, it definitely to me evokes again, like that Avalon, you know, just, the myths of Avalon, you know, this and, um, and elves. And it, it definitely gives me that vibe, but I'm definitely not using it. I think, I think I used it once from the time I had it. This is beautiful. But I feel like they could almost work as altar cards. Like, like some of them are like, are really beautiful. And I could see using them in that way. Like this with the trees and like the little lights, like little fireflies, like it, it really is nice. And of course, like I'm second guessing myself now because some of these images are really beautiful. Like I could almost see taking this deck, I paid less than $10 for it. I could almost see taking this deck and using it as part of my grimoire and like literally using these, the cards themselves and, and, and putting them into my, my grimoire that I have. I could definitely see that happening. So I may have to rethink that. Look at this, that's beautiful. So I may have to rethink it, but I'm definitely not using it as an oracle the way it's intended. I feel like it, it could possibly be something I could work with, you know, where I, I use it in, in my Book of Shadows as part of my practice because I do resonate with a lot of the images, which is nice, but we'll have to see. That's something we'll think about. I could see it probably working in that capacity, but for right now, I feel like it should go to someone who's gonna use it as an oracle. So that's the Earth Wisdom Oracle. Let's see. Okay, another Oracle deck leaving the collection is The Goddesses and Sirens by Stacey DeMarco. Uh, so this deck, I, I'm trying to think. I probably purchased this about two years ago. Um, and I probably only looked through it. Again, it's another one of those decks that I just, I just don't reach for at all. Um, and while I do have a goddess centered practice, it's probably why I, I gravitate towards decks like this. These, this is the goddesses and sirens deck. So I feel like because I do have a goddess centered spiritual practice, I'm usually called, you know, to these types of decks. 
So it's Stacey DeMarco. If anyone has her, you know, any of her other decks, you know, you're very familiar with her artwork. Um, the guidebook is pretty extensive. Um, it, you know, it introduces you to the goddess um, and it has like a key message. And then about, obviously there's like a blurb about the goddess and like a background about their story. And then there's a shadow side and symbols that are coming from the artwork. So it is a pretty extensive guidebook in general. Uh, so, you know, I, f I feel like you can definitely get a lot from the guidebook. Uh, where I pretty much came, have an issue with this deck, it, it's definitely huge. It's bigger than Oracle size. It like literally covers my entire hand. So it is a big deck. You're shuffling it's gonna be an issue. So, and then there's the artwork, which again, it's nothing against the artist, the creator. I have nothing against, you know, the art in general. But for me, um, the way I see these deities, like the Baba Yaga, it's definitely not this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I do work a lot with like crone energy. I'm very much drawn to, um, to the crone Winter's like my favorite season, which some may be like why, but uh, it, it really is one of my favorite seasons. Um, I love that energy and I just don't see the Baba Yaga that way. Um, Bast, you know, all of these, these, you know, they are fierce. It is called goddesses and sirens. I'm all about them, you know, being depicted as fierce, strong, warrior-like. Um, but this is a little too perfect, a little too body beautiful you know for me personally um I also feel like the art is something about it is like a little out of focus I, I don't know how to describe it it looks blurry to me now while there's a lot of action going on in this card to me I don't know it just it looks blurry it could just be me um just another problem I just yeah I just have a problem with the depictions I Bridget is my matron deity I I work with Bridget I have symbols, I have shrines to Bridget like all over my house. This is definitely not how I see her. Um, and while, you know, yes, we look at her as like a goddess of renewal and, you know, she may be associated with more of the maiden aspect um, because of the awakening of Imbolc and uh, I just don't see her this way. So this probably was like, as soon as I got to this card, I was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to be able to work with this. So... So, and like I said, some people love this deck and that's wonderful and they identify with these deities and like I said, wonderful. Again, Gaia, not, just not how I see her. Um, and it, it, yeah, there's just, it's just not the deck for me. I definitely have goddess decks that I resonate with and this is just definitely not one of them. So this is going to be leaving my collection. Hopefully someone, you know, who will like definitely use it and appreciate it. Um, like I said, the guidebook is actually pretty, pretty good in terms of what it includes and how much it covers. So, but it's, it's just not a deck for me. So it's going to be going with my other Oracle decks, um, the goddesses and sirens. Okay, the next deck uh, that I have leaving my collection is the Goddess Oracle deck and book set by Amy Sophia Marashinsky, and it's illustrated by Rana Janto. Um, this deck is, I mean, it really is gorgeous. It It's a gorgeous deck. Uh, I don't really have much, you know, negative to say about this, except that it's just, I have very specific goddesses that I work with. Um, and deities that I work with. And I think that decks that have, um, I think it's wonderful when they include goddesses from all different cultures. And I, I think it's, it's wonderful. And I think that any goddess oracle that's encompassing, encompassing all goddesses should include goddesses from different cultures, from different regions of the world, definitely. I don't, I don't think that that's a problem. And the guidebook is actually wonderful. There's rituals. Um, there's the mythology behind each goddess. Um, there's a, uh, like usually a poem or like a saying, which is, is, is wonderful. Like I said, mythology, the meaning of the cards. 
Um, and then you have a ritual suggestion, which is great because if you have a goddess centered practice, it's wonderful to include. Um, and it's wonderful that the guidebook has that. Here's the backs. Um, I, I mean, I do have an issue with the name being on the back. It's, it, it's a little distracting. I, I don't like when there's titles on the backs of cards. It's, it's fine. It's not a deal breaker. That's not why I'm rehoming this, but it, it is a little bit of a pet peeve. Um, but I mean, it, this deck is wonderful. Like I said, if you're looking for, um, you know, a, a deck that encompasses many goddesses that gives you like a wide range. Again, if you have a goddess centered practice, I feel like this deck will be wonderful. Like it's a wonderful addition and can be used as I feel like they're very large cards. Again, covering my entire hand. I've seen many people cut the borders off you know, mod modify this deck because it is very large and there's very large white borders. Um, but they can be definitely used as altar cards. I find, I feel like that would be a wonderful way to use this deck. I have used this deck that way. Um, this is one that I actually have used. Um, and I feel like I just have outgrown it because my spiritual practice, my goddess centered practice has changed so much over the last five years, um, that I really, really focus on um, studying, working with um, deities that are related to my ancestry. Um, and that's just my, you know, my personal preference. It's just the way my spiritual practice has changed over the last, you know, several years. But these are gorgeous cards. Like I said, they incorporate goddesses from all over the world, from many cultures, many backgrounds. And I think that's wonderful. Like I said, any good goddess deck that is a, a goddess oracle, it's, you know, it's not an Egyptian goddess oracle. It's not a Celtic goddess oracle. This is the goddess oracle. So it definitely should include goddesses from all different cultures. So it is, it is a gorgeous deck. I, the artwork is beautiful. The, um, the keywords are very expansive. The guidebook is very, very detailed. It, it is a wonderful deck. It's just one that I've outgrown and I definitely, you know, I'm not using it because of the way my goddess practice has changed, but it's beautiful. This is more of how I see Baba Yaga. That's definitely more of how I, I see her, uh, you know, crone energy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I'm not using it because of the way my, my practice has changed. So I feel like, you know, it, it definitely should go to someone who's going to use this and really incorporate it into their practice because it's it's a wonderful deck and it brings a lot um and and it gives a lot and it's the artwork is is beautiful and the diversity is beautiful so yeah if i was going to recommend any goddess deck an all-encompassing goddess deck it would definitely be this one so this is the goddess oracle by anna amy sophia marashinsky um so yeah so this will be leaving my collection, hopefully going to someone who will definitely use it. The Goddess Oracle. All right, I think we only have one. Oh no, two, I lied. We have two Oracle decks left. Um, so the next one I have is the Messenger Oracle by Raven Falan. So this is the new edition. This is the updated edition. Um, it, I just don't understand why they can't make a box that fits the cards. Just don't get it. Definitely a pet peeve. Um, you know, just make a, a guidebook and the deck the same size. I'm just saying, I feel like it's pretty simple, but so that's a pet peeve. That's definitely not why I'm, I'm rehoming this, but <laughs> it is a pet peeve. Um, so these are the backs. This, um, like I said, is the newer edition, which is in this like very nice matte cardstock, which I love. And, you know, it's borderless. It's just, it is beautiful. Um, you know, when it came out, um, you know, I'm pretty sure this was a Lisa made me do it. Lisa Pepez, formerly of Supportive Tarot. Um, I'm sure many of you know her, watch her, love her. And I'm sure many of you have been influenced by her. And I'm pretty sure this was one of those. Um, and it wasn't a bad decision. I, it, It's a beautiful deck. You know, Raven Falan, uh, Falan's artwork is, you know, is definitely stunning. She definitely creates beautiful decks. But I rehomed the Dreams of Gaia Tarot 
And so I, I probably shouldn't have purchased this deck. Um, while it is gorgeous and the, the artwork is stunning, I have no, you know, no problems with the artwork. I just, I didn't connect with the Dreams of Gaia because of the system. And I feel like this obviously pairs really well, you know, with that deck, which I no longer have. I rehomed that deck. Um, I think this was a case of, I never really was interested in the previous edition because of the cards and the card stock. It just never really appealed to me. And then uh, I think Lisa did a side by side, if I remember correctly. I'll try to remember to like find her video and link it. I think I feel like she did a side by side of the old version and this updated version. And I just like fell in love with like this card size and the card stock. It just looked so nice. This matte card stock, like the images looked so great on this matte card stock. So I really feel like this was like an aesthetic purchase. Um, and I find that like most recently I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move away from that. Um, because if I did that, I would literally purchase every deck that I see because I find something aesthetically pleasing about most decks, you know, that I come across. So not a good idea to just buy decks based on aesthetics, at least for me. It just doesn't work for me. And I think that that's what's happened here. And I, I and I did use this deck for like a, a card a day reading. Um, for a month, for a month, um, I do remember doing card a day readings with this deck. Um, you know, and they were wonderful. The messages, you know, I feel like are, are, I like, it's not just a keyword, it's like a phrase. So, you know, it's, it's expansive enough. Um, you can definitely like just read this without the guidebook. The guidebook is great. It, you know, it does provide a lot of information. I feel like you can read these though without the guidebook. Um, so yeah, definitely not, you know, no problem with readings. I just, I just don't use it. It's another one of those things. It's, it's, it's almost in perfect condition. I feel like a deck like this should definitely be used. Um, but I also feel like I shouldn't be keeping decks because I love the card stock. I mean, it's kind of silly. Um, cause I do love the card stock, but if I'm not going to use it, then the card stock's not getting appreciated anyway. So it really doesn't make any sense. Um, so this one's definitely going to be leaving. It, it really is pretty. Um, it's, it's a really beautiful deck. And if you have dreams of Gaia and you don't have this, I feel like this would be great, you know, to use with that. And it would really just be great if, uh, Blue Angel could figure out how to get a box that fits both. Just saying. So that's the Messenger Oracle and that's going to be leaving my collection. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for Oracle. So now we're moving on to tarot decks leaving my collection. So in no particular order, we'll start with this. This is the Universal Celtic Tarot. Um, so this is a low Scarabeo. Um, it's kind of like your classic low Scarabeo deck, classic box. Um, I believe I purchased this on Amazon, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, it's a low Scarabeo deck. Um, the Universal Celtic Tarot. Uh, and I think as I've mentioned, you know, because I've been working with Celtic deities, you know, this appealed to me. Um, look at the backs. The backs are gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so it appealed to me in a way of, because of the, 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 the theme of the deck, you know, being Celtic. So, um, but I've realized something else I've realized about myself is I don't, I, for some reason do not like the size of these low Scarabeo decks. They're like narrow and long. I, I don't know what it is, but it really it really irks me and like I don't find myself working with these decks because of that. I know that may be such a silly and shallow reason for not working with a deck but something about the shape of these, the fact that they're like long and skinny, like they're not the standard tarot size, I, it really bothers me. So that's one thing I feel like prevents me from working with this deck. And then the other which I think I mentioned too is sort of like this 90s reminiscent of the 90s uh digital kind of art style um I you know I don't mind it it's not it's not like a deal breaker I just I don't find myself reaching for this at all like I think I used it for like a couple of days and that was it um I have the green witch tarot which really kind of fills this niche 
for me. I, I have the Green Witch. I love the Green Witch Tarot. I do like the Sun card. The stag. It's, it's very Celtic, you know. It definitely has those vibes, but I just never used it. Never used it. Like I said, maybe for a few days after I got it, you know, I... But I find myself just not really resonating with the images as much. Um, there's a lot of like fairies, which is fine. I, I have fairy decks. I, you know, I work with fae energy, especially certain times of year. But I feel like it's too much of a like, is it a fae deck? Is it not? Is it, you know, it, it, is it Celtic? Like just because it's Celtic, does it have to be fae? I don't know. I get very confused by it. So all I can say is that I've been very confused by this deck and I feel like that's why I haven't worked with it. So it's definitely, um, you know, it's definitely going to be leaving. Um, I, I just don't work with it enough. Like I said, the Los Scarabeo decks, I've learned to just not even purchase them, unfortunately, because I just don't like the shape, the size of the cards, something about it, something about it. It's me. It's me. It's a problem. It's my problem. It's no one else's problem, but I'm definitely going to be rehoming that one. And in the same sort of genre, we have, uh, this is the Triple Goddess Tarot. Um, again, beautiful backs. I don't have a box. I actually bought this used. So I bought this um, um, secondhand from somebody. So it didn't come with a box. Um, but again, it's a low Scarabeo deck. So, you know, we have that issue of the size. So. That's, that's a little bit of an issue for me. Um, <clears throat> so, so this deck, I, again, I don't know. I'm not sure why the art again is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with the artwork. Like I love this, the, you know, the images like this type of, but again, it, it gives me that, that nineties, which I just don't find myself being drawn to, you know, anymore. Um, I, 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 I think I'm just, I'm looking for like different. Now I, 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 I seek out like very different, like quirky. That's what I just find. Like I'm being drawn to. I still love my, my decks that have this type of artwork, but I find that like, I have like my core decks and those are the ones I use. I'm not reaching for these, you know, for these other ones. Again, I have an issue with the size. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, but I had the Wizard's Tarot by uh, Barbara Moore. I had the, the Wizard's Tarot that came out, you know, a few years ago. And I immediately rehomed it. And this reminds me a little bit of that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's the artwork. It, it reminds me a little bit of that. Um, you know, it's, it's everyone's very beautiful. And I feel like that's, that's reminiscent of, you know, of tarot cast, you know, it, it's not to say that you can't have, you know, thin people, you know, but there's so many different forms of beauty and there's so many ways that you can re represent people. Um, and I don't see myself in decks like these. I, I don't, they don't resonate with me. Um, you know, everyone's for the most part, pretty young, like I said, pretty thin, pretty body beautiful. Um, you know, here's like one who's depicted as old, you know, but it, you know, again, I feel like sometimes it's always on like the negative, negative in quotes cards. Cause there's really no, no negatives in the tarot, at least in my opinion. But I just feel like a lot of times the older people are depicted in the cards that are like the more that have that more negative connotation. So I don't know something something about it. Like I said, there's really nothing wrong with it, but I'm just going to be rehoming it. That's the triple goddess tarot. And I don't have the box. Uh, let's see. So next on the list is another tarot deck, the ethereal visions by Matt Hughes. Uh, I feel like this is a very well-known deck. I feel like many people have this deck. I've had it for quite a long time. And it's in almost perfect condition because I have pretty much never used it. Um, when I first got it, I used it. I believe I got it in the spring. To me, it reminds me of a very springy deck. 
um, these colors. You know, it's very springy. Um, it's a great size. This is the size that I like using. Um, so yeah, so that's great. Um, it's that very Art Nouveau style. It has this like beautiful gold foil. I mean, it really is gorgeous. I have no issues with the artwork at all. It's, it's beautiful. Um, but I just, I just never use it. I just never use it. Um, it, like I said, it has like this, the art, very Art Nouveau style. Um, and the imagery is gorgeous. It, it is lacking in diversity. It's definitely not a very diverse deck. Um, and you know, pretty much lacks, you know, any type of diversity whatsoever. So, um, age diversity, body diversity, to me, you know, just gender identity, diversity, um, just any type of diversity it really lacks. So I don't see a lot of depth with this. It's again, like one of those aesthetics. It's like an aesthetic deck. And I, I just don't find myself working with decks that I just, oh, this is beautiful. Like looking at this is beautiful, but I don't connect with it as a deck that to read with that I'm gonna use in my tarot practice. Um, it's gorgeous. They're like little mini works of art, but I'm not using it. So it's definitely, you know, time to go. Like I said, it's in almost perfect condition. I think I've used it, you know, when I first got it and that was it, but everything is pretty much in perfect condition. It's standard guidebook, you know, for the most part. Um, there's no images. It's it's definitely like pretty standard. I feel like this would be good for a beginner. Um, and like I said, it's gorgeous. The box is gorgeous. I mean, it's gorgeous, but definitely just not one that I'm working with. All right. Next is the Tarot de Luz, which still has some of the plastic on it. So the Tarot de Luz. So the Tarot of Light comes in a tuck box. Um, this deck I purchased and um, because I did see some walkthroughs of it and I thought, you know, that's like, it's very, you know, I just liked, it's whimsical. It's very whimsical. It kind of spoke to me, but then I got it and realized, look how small it is. I, the size, it really gets to me. I was so disappointed. I probably should do my research a little better and look at the dimensions of cards. So that's on me, but it's, it's small. It's, I, I just don't reach for decks this size. I don't know what it is. It's like the shape and the size of the deck really matters to me. And that's like, I don't know. It's a silly reason, but it's just me. That's me. That's how I feel about it. But the art is so whimsical. Like, look at these little faces. I, I I'm just so sad that I, I don't connect with it. And a lot of it has to do with the size. It's like super slippery cardstock. You know, I don't mind the certain cardstocks, you know, that I like when they're, you know, slippery. But being that this is so small and it's like slippery, I don't know. It, I don't know what it was, but when I got it in my hands, I just didn't connect with it. But it's so, it's so whimsical. Like the, I love the artwork. I feel like if these were bigger cards and they were like matte, I don't know. I feel like I probably would connect with it more, but, but it, it is a very sweet little deck. It's very, it's filled with symbolism. I mean, you can, you can get a lot from working with these. Um, I didn't really work with it much, so I don't, can't speak from experience, but I feel like you can definitely get a lot from working with this deck. There's, you know, a lot of symbolism. And like I said, the, the, the art is just very sweet. Like, and like, there's just, they're so whimsical. I don't know. I do, I do love the artwork and the color choices, you know, the color palette is like kind of right up my alley. So I'm very sad I didn't connect with this deck, but um, it is a, it is a lovely little deck. And I say little, because it's probably what I have a problem with. But like I said, that's my problem. That's no one else's. Um, it's, it's a very, it's just very cute, very whimsical. Comes with a little white book. Um, you know, but I'm definitely going to be rehoming it because I, I didn't connect with it almost right out of the gate and I don't use it at all. And it's a shame because it's brand new. So hopefully somebody will, will snatch that one up. 
Uh, let's see. So the next deck I will be rehoming is the Naked Heart Tarot, which pains me to say because this was a gift from my lovely significant other who, you know, just doesn't read tarot and, um, you know, is not into tarot at all and, and saw this and just thought I would love it. And I just thought it was so sweet. And, um, and actually, I mean, it, I, I do like it. It's just, I didn't connect with it. I have a tough time with animal decks, a tough time. I have like very few animal decks and those are the ones I connect with and those are the ones I use. Um, but this is a gorgeous deck. It's, uh, by Jillian C. Wild. Um, the guidebook is phenomenal. You know, it's technically a little white book, but it's, it's very, um, it's very in depth in terms of it has the astrological and it has the crystals and it, um, it has like a disconnect message, which I like, not reverse, but disconnect, um, which I feel sometimes is more appropriate than reverse because I feel like the card, you know, maybe we're, there's a disconnect somewhere and we're not connecting with the energy of that card. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely, you know, the guidebook is definitely, um, you know, extensive um, and provides a lot of information. Uh, and it, it also came with this, like, um, it's a crystal grid, a crystal grid, like, fold out, which I thought was really nice for people who use crystal grids. Uh, the cardstock is very nice. It's a very nice, um, you know, nice produced deck. It's the matte, you know, matte cardstock. These are the backs. Um, so yeah, so it's it's a lovely deck. I just didn't connect with it. And I think it's because there's so much white space. There is a lot of white space in this deck. Um, so I think I struggled with connecting with it because of that. Um, I typically am drawn to really colorful decks. Um, I do, I mean, I do like black and white decks, you know, um, Terror of the Abyss is like, I love that deck, but I tend to like decks that are super, uh, scenic, if that's like the word you can use. Like I've talked about the narrative, you know, I can't read pip decks because of that. I don't connect with pip decks at all because there's no scene. I really, I really, I, I enjoy the storytelling aspect of tarot. I enjoy path working with the tarot. So yeah, um, I, I think that's the disconnect with this deck. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's, it's very pippish as you can see. There's like animals, um, but it, to me, I can't, I can't, I couldn't connect. I couldn't get clear readings. Um, it, like I said, it's nothing to do with the artwork. The artwork is, is, is wonderful. The cardstock is wonderful, but I just couldn't connect. Like I said, there's animal decks. Oh, Gash and Thorn, that's my animal deck. That's, you know, that's the deck that I use. You know, that's that animal energy. Um, so there's just very little room in my practice for animal decks because I don't use them very often. I don't mind that there's, when there's animals in decks, but when they're all animals, um, and I don't really connect with anthropomorphized animals, I just don't. So, you know, these, while these are just their animals, they're not, they're not, you know, they haven't been um, put into like human situations. There's a lot of that white space and I just don't, I just can't connect. It, it's a beautiful deck and I love that, you know, it was purchased for me. It was a gift. It was purchased out of love, but I feel like it's a shame that, you know, it's not getting used. I feel like there's definitely people out there that will connect with this deck, you know, that use these types of decks that love them, that will get like so much out of them. It's just not me. So uh, that's the Naked Heart Tarot. And that will be rehomed. And hopefully, like I said, someone will, will get so much out of it. Because um, it is really a beautiful deck. The box is beautiful. So I really hope that, you know, someone someone can, can snatch that one up. Okay, so the next one I have is the Steampunk Tarot. And this box is ginormous. So let's zoom out a little. So um, this is a Barbara Moore deck. I, it's 
I'm pretty sure it's been around for a while, like 2012. Um, I bought this in a local metaphysical store. Uh, and I, I, I really don't know what prompted me to get this. I, I feel like I, I saw it. I saw this on Instagram. Um, it has a monster, like monster guidebook. Um, the box is horrific. It's like a box from 2012. So it has a horrific box. Like if you were reading tarot back then, you know, um, those are the, just the boxes we've got. We've made so many vast improvements in boxes, but so this, it has a monster. I mean, Barbara Moore, like it, monster guidebooks. I feel like that's what we, we come to expect from Barbara Moore, but I definitely did not read through the guidebook. So I don't have much to say about it. Um, I rehomed the Wizard's Tarot and I bought this after that. So you would think I would learn sort of my lesson when it comes to certain things and what is going to end up being used in my collection. So these are the backs. They're awesome. I mean, steampunk is, you know, it, it's cool. It's definitely, you know, a cool theme for a tarot deck, but it's not something that I'm even into. I think this is in order. I'm pretty sure this has been in order because I never used it. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe I shuffled. I shuffled a few times. I shuffled a few times. I think I pulled, you know, I did some card pulls. Um, so yeah, the artwork is, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. Um, I like that nine of pentacles. You know, there's definitely cards I like. I just didn't connect with it again. I think it's just like, because it's, I don't know. I don't know what I want to say. Generic. I don't want to say generic. That sounds really like, it sounds really like elitist. I don't know. But for me, like the artwork is, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Man, there you go. It's fine. Um, you know, but it is again, very body beautiful, very, you know, everyone is very beautiful and young and thin and, um, you know, it's set in this world that, you know, it, it definitely like is immerses you in that world, but it's not a world that I'm interested in. So I'm not really sure why I purchased this deck. It's, it's one of those things that I, I won't understand. And like I said, I become way more intentional with the decks that I bring in to my collection. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, it definitely has changed so much. So I feel like things like this won't be happening. You know, they haven't been happening. I just, you know, this is why I have so many decks, you know, to declutter right now, because this is what was happening. And I feel like that's definitely changed. Um, so again, it's, there's nothing wrong with this deck and many people I'm sure have this and use it and like love it, but it's not something that I, I connect with. Um, and I pretty sure I never used it. I, I shuffled it. I don't think I ever used it for, and I, and I definitely never got through this guidebook. Um, but you know, it looks very meaty it's a Barbara Moore guidebook, which, you know, some people, you know, think they're wonderful. Some people don't really see what the big deal is about. Tower of the Hidden Realm is one of my favorite decks. I do love that guidebook, you know, that she wrote, but, um, but I know some people don't, you know, don't see what the, you know, the major appeal is. Um, but it's, you know, it's nice having a, you like a big chunky meaty guidebook, you know, for these decks, especially if you're, you're a new tower reader you know, it, it can be a wonderful thing. So, um, that's the steampunk tarot in this really awful box. Um, but that will be rehomed, um, in it's really awful box and hopefully someone will use it. So the next deck is the herb crafters tarot, um, which I absolutely love. Like I, I do love this deck. Um, it's just one that I, I don't use, you know, and I, I used to use and then I stopped and it just never made its way back in. Um, and I think it's because I added, you know, things that were, were somewhat similar, um, to my collection. And I also started using herbs in a very different way. Um, so I think I sort of outgrew this because my practice changed again, which is going to happen. Um, but this deck is 
wonderful. Um, the artwork's by Joanna Powell Colbert, who um, did the Guy in Tarot, which is gorgeous. So, you know, it's beautiful. It's written by Letitia Guthrie. It's, it's a beautiful, the guidebook is wonderful. Um, the way it incorporates the herbs and the plants. Um, and then it gives you a crafting with, you know, with it. So it, it really is beautiful. Um, it really is, um, dedicated to herbs. There's no people in this deck other than hands. Um, so you really only see hands, I believe, in this deck. Um, there's no actual, like, full human beings. Um, it's just hands. So it, it really is, like, a crafter, herb crafter. It's exactly, like, what it says it is, you know, which I think is great. Um, so again, you know, the art is wonderful. It's Joanna Powell Culver. If you have, love, seen the guy in tarot, then, you you know, you know. Um, cedar. I, I, I do, I do love these cards. I, like I said, I love the images. Um, I, you know, I did use this and then use it in a very specific way. And then sort of my practice changed with herbs. And then I was using this as more of like altar, like altar cards, like to meditate on. Um, so I didn't really use it as a tarot. I wasn't using it as like a full tarot deck. Um, to me, it can almost be used as an oracle. And, you know, because like I said, I have the seed and sickle, I have the oracle of essences. I I just, I, I wasn't reaching for this anymore. And I feel like it's a shame because it's an amazing deck. And I feel like anyone who's, who's starting out in her, like learning about herbs and herbalism, this is, it's magnificent. Anyone who loves tarot, loves herbs, it's a wonderful deck. It's, it's, that's who it's made for. You know, I think it would be a great study deck for learning herbs and their magical properties and their properties and how to use them in everyday life and how to use them in magic. I, I think it's wonderful. I think it, but for me, I'm just not, I'm not using it anymore. Um, and it definitely deserves to be used. Um, you know, it deserves to be used as a tarot deck. Uh, and, and that's just, it's not, it's not what I was using it for. I sort of changed, which is okay. Some tarot decks, you know, you know, are more like oracles. But as I said, I'm not using oracle as much. I'm not drawn to oracle cards. I'm, I'm definitely going to be calling that collection more because I don't use them. I have very specific ways I use oracle and I don't feel I need, you know, that many decks. So I just don't think this fits in to my practice right now because I, I don't, I'm not using oracle cards. So to use this as an oracle, it just wouldn't get used. So it's not being used as a tarot. It's, you know, it's not really being used in any way. So I definitely feel like it should go to someone who's going to use it. But that's the Herb Crafters Tarot. Um, it's in a lovely box. Uh, it's a very nice box. Uh, like I said, the guidebook is, you know, is wonderful. So that's the Herb Crafters Tarot. So, and let's see, I think I only have one more deck left. Finally. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's the Darkwood Tarot by Sasha Graham, art by Abigail Larson. Um, and I can tell you, like, I was so excited about this deck. Like, I followed it from, like, when it was announced. I actually did, like, a, um, a Zoom um, there was like a local metaphysical shop that was hosting Sasha Graham. She was doing a zoom, showing the cards, like ask, um, answering questions. I like attended that. I was so excited about this deck. Um, and I like literally don't know what happened. I, it's, you know, in like, it, it doesn't really presentation wise, like a set, it doesn't really get more beautiful than this. It's, you know, it's a Llewellyn deck. So, you know, you're getting that like gigantic, full color guidebook. I mean, look, like Forest of Enchantment. And look at that. Look at the color, the reds. I mean, I so wanted to love this deck. I so wanted to work with this deck. Like, I literally thought that this was going to be a soul deck for me. And the fact that it wasn't was sort of heartbreaking for me. Like, 
I don't know. I can't explain it. Um, I, you know, I love everything, you know, about just the idea of the dark wood and fairy tales and just that, you know, just like I said, storytelling is huge and pathworking is big for me with tarot. So I was like so excited about this and I just don't know what happened. The backs, I think the backs are beautiful. I don't mind that it has like the D and W, you know, it, it fits, you know, it fits. It's very Gothic, you know, it's, it's just like that Gothic, like story, you know, storybook feel, um, you know, standard Llewellyn cardstock, which I actually don't mind. I actually like, um, I like the size. Um, so yeah, so like I thought for sure this was going to be like a soul deck for me when I saw images of it. Um, so yeah, so I, I, nobody was more disappointed than I was that it just wasn't. And I think part of it is the, you know, again, that body beautiful, you know, it, it's, it just definitely is a problem for me. Um, the, you know, I just, I just don't connect because of the representation. Um, I like to see like people, myself, people I know, people I love, people in my life, my family, my friends, just people I know. I like to see them in the tarot decks because, because so much of my practice revolves around that path working, that storytelling, that narrative, that, that just putting yourself in the cards. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't see myself or anybody that I love or connect with or friends or family or just, I just couldn't see them in this deck. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing, the artwork I love, I mean, the artwork is, is gorgeous. You know, it, like I said, it's that Gothic, like sort of red riding hood, you know, but <clears throat> excuse me, for me, it's like, I don't know, it's like red riding hood, but like in an adult film sort of way. And I hate to say that. I don't, I feel like I'm not explaining myself right, but there's just, it's just something. It's something didn't click with me um, to use this as a tarot. Like, I feel like to look at it, again, it's one of those decks, like I could look at it all day. I could be like, ooh, like, it, I think it's a little bit, it's a little bit Disney for me. I, I don't know. I don't know how I'm not describing it the right way. I'm not like explaining myself very well, but something about it just didn't click with me. Like, like I said, it, it sort of reminds me of like Disney, like, but everyone's like, yeah, like the, the, the old school Disney, everyone's beautiful, you know, everyone's gorgeous and that's great. But like, where's the reality? I feel like if you want to step into like another world and like you're, it's all fantasy and it's all, you know, storybook and it's all, you know, like I said, then everyone is beautiful and, and, and everyone is beautiful, but not when they all look the same, like everyone's beautiful in their diversity and everyone's beautiful in how, how different they are and how unique they are. And I feel like it hit, it missed the mark for me. And yeah, I just, I didn't connect. I tried, I put it away for a while, took it out again, took it out at Samhain, took it out for Halloween, thought, okay, it's definitely got that vibe. Like maybe now, nope, I just didn't connect. So this will definitely be leaving my collection. And I hope it goes to someone who loves it. I know there are people who love this. I watched YouTube videos of people who this is their soul deck. And I, and I'm so happy for them because I feel like it should be, it, you know, it definitely should be used and appreciated and, and someone should love it. You know, it's just, it just didn't happen for me. And it's very sad, like I said, because I was super excited about this. Um, but yeah, it just didn't work. And um, so now I'm going to send it off, hopefully, to someone who would love it. And it's in almost perfect condition. Um, and like I said, the guidebook, I mean, it's just one of those beautiful, beautiful guidebooks. So that is the Darkwood Tarot. 
and it will be leaving my collection. So that's it for now. I'm sure there's going to be more culling happening um, as, you know, just things change for me and I come to realizations about my practice and I hope it stays that way. I hope it's ever evolving and I hope, you know, that I'm constantly evolving with my tarot practice because I feel like it can get stagnant. I feel like we all go through that where we don't touch tarot for like months or years even. I went through years of not touching it and I feel like... um you know, that's when a lot of growth happens. And then when you come back to it, you just realize that like, you know, things that you used to like, you don't like anymore. And things that, you know, you used to be drawn to, you're just not, and that's okay. And that's where I hope all of these decks go to, you know, someone who's going to love them and use them. And it is going to fit into their practice perfectly. So I hope so. And I'm sure, um, like I said, there'll be more calling happening and I'll share it with all of you and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.